Jesus, during his Sermon on the Mount, said something boldly that we need to listen to now more than ever. He said, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body and what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow? They do not labor or spin. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all of his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. These passages about worry are quite easy to read when life is easy, when we are on the mountaintops and not in our valleys. But this passage is communicating directly to those who are in a time of unknown in their life. We like to plan ahead and we don't, we don't only have a plan A, but we have a plan B and sometimes even a plan C. Even, and even with all this planning, life tends to throw us a curveball. The most recent curveball, I think, is COVID-19, and it hit a lot of us quite hard. Even after more than a month, and although life is slowly getting back to normal, the word around town is still worry. We can't help but feel unsettled of what the future brings. And yet Jesus tells us, he doesn't ask us to not worry about our lives, about what we'll eat or drink or about our body. He tells us in verse 26 to look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or stir away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they, than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? How does that make us feel, what Jesus just said? Maybe we feel justified to feel worried in our circumstances, as if we earned the right to worry. If the world is worrying, why can't I worry in this time? But Jesus here boldly encourages all those who are listening that God has you. And asks the subtle but pointed question, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Later on, Jesus says in verse 34, For the pagans run after food, drink, and clothes. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But, but listen to this. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Worry happens when we believe our situation or circumstances is bigger than our God. Worry happens when we think our temporary circumstances are more pressing and more important than our eternal existence. Jesus is telling us here that God is the author of life, the director of creation. If the birds are taken care of, if the fields are artfully clothed in, in grass with grass and flowers, are you not much more valuable than they? How much would it take for us to put trust in God, to put our trust in God in the hard and good times? Jesus gives us a hint on how to do this, and he says in verse 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. A.W. Tozer says something pretty aggressive, but he says, you can, bl you can blame your circumstances, but backsliding always begins with the heart. Where are you putting your trust in today? Where is your heart leading you toward? To temporary or eternal? To trust or to worry. We serve a God that wants to know our anxieties, 
We serve a God that wants to know our worries. And we serve a God that we can bring these towards and who will take them away from us. Do you trust in God?